always an encouraging sign when you're going into a new spot. Had rain. We had 20 odd mil of rain at home the last couple of days, so this bit of action here is pretty fresh. Wow, you wouldn't believe that. So I just showed you those fresh stag tracks. I reckon I went another 100 yards maybe. And the marks were going the way I was going, so I was tracking, tracking. And I heard a little rumble, I looked over, and there he is popping up out of his bed bloody 80 yards away. Just snooping around the corner to get away from me real quiet. Not a bad head either, he's probably 26, 28, really wide I'd say, pushing 30 wide. Real skinny, little, little tined sort of animal, but not little inners, but I would have smoked him if I had the chance, but I had the gun packed away and as I'm hiking in, not really hunting. Anyway, let that one through to the keeper. Right, uh, here we go again. Hiking in, two nights, ultralight. Pack weighs 14 and a half kilos with five litres of water and two kilos of food. So, I can't get much lighter than that, I don't reckon. I can a little bit, but it's going to cost a lot more money. And this is manageable. I can go pretty rough through some pretty rough country with this sort of weight on. Now, I've already seen that good stag. That's the only deer I've seen or heard on the way in. It's about the only fresh sign I've seen too. So, But I'm just on the top here now. I've just walked through some you know, meadowy, high planing sort of stuff. Now I'm going down 800 metres, I think I'm going down. Um, it's going to be pretty steep, pretty rocky, but it's going to give me a great look out across some country that I have seen deer in the past. So going along with the theme of why I'm doing what I'm doing. Just trying to get away from every bugger. I'm sick of running into hunters. Sick of hunting spots where you don't see deer because they've been hunters there, there's been a lot of hunting pressure. So I've just gone on the back of the back and it's not easy to get here. And it's going to take a lot of effort to get out. So I'm thinking that it's going to have a lot less hunting pressure, but I also realise it's going to have a lot less deer. And the country that I'm in, it's not going to allow me to move around too much. So if this is a dud down in here, bad luck. I'm just going to have to either pull the pin and come out or they're going to be there and I'm, I'm going to get one. We'll see some. So hit that button, the red one somewhere there. I don't know. Subscribe. That's what it's all about. That keeps, keeps the channel going. The more subscribers, the better. I got a new little camera for this trip, borrowed off my dad. It's got 40 power optical zoom, which is not super big, but I should be able to, if I find some deer across the gully, I should be able to get some better footage, which might improve the you know quality of these videos. Anyway, it's nice and warm, so I'm keeping an eye out for the old wriggle six. It was only a drop down to two degrees driving up here at lunchtime, so I don't know what time it is now. It must be around about two o'clock. Uh, there's another thing for you. I like walking in late in the day, late in late morning, early afternoon, so I can take my time getting in to where I want to get to, get set up, and then I'll get that. The first hunt's an afternoon hunt. I reckon it's better to have the deer do their thing through the morning and then hit them hard in the afternoon for the first one. If you tend to try to get into these spots in the morning, by the time you drive up here or you know, you leave camp at daylight or you walk a bit in the dark. You're not getting in here, at, uh, you know, that hour after daylight. So you're sort of missing that prime time. So I figure let the prime time go, let, let them do their thing. Slip in here during the early afternoon. Hopefully they're comfortable and quiet and they pop out in the afternoon. It gives you a good crack at them. Anyway, let's stop talking and start walking. That's a bit better camp spot, isn't it? Shit, yeah. 
See, so I've got some nice faces over on that little knob. And I can see I've got some good clear country over there. And I'm going to be right here. I've got deer sign here. It's not real old. And I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm, I'm amongst them. Even though I haven't got like heaps of sign here, it feels like I'm right in there, which is good. Three o'clock now, I can set up camp and I'm going to be right on the bluff. There's a little bluff just there, so it's going to give me a real good look out. Could be dead just there, you know. Here's the uh, face that I really wanted to look at, which made me came all the way in here. It's going to be interesting to see what shows up tonight. I've got another face just over here. Though, so I don't know, could be a morning spot where they come back through looking for sun. So it's pretty warm today and I think the weather's only supposed to get better. So we'll have to just wait and see. So I just spotted that stag and what he's done is he's switched beds, he's come out of the sun, he's gone into the shade, believe it or not. But what I've done in the meantime, setting up, probably not going to shoot him, but I just wanted to set up and make sure you know, I can get comfortable. I've tipped the bloody camera and the bipod over the cliff. Luckily it didn't go too far, but it went 25 yards straight down so the camera's out of action put the bipod back so I owe dad a camera oh, well. these things have it so I don't know how much more footage I'll get because I didn't bring my <laughs> phone scope set up so what a bugger do a bit of dodgy stuff through the binos just by holding on to it but it might be a bit shaky how's this little cooker 25 grams that cooker weighs titanium and I've got this pot it only weighs like 60 or 70 grams so I cut down from my old cooker to the, the old stainless saucepan I had I lost 350 grams. That's pretty awesome. That deer's been standing there for half an hour, 40 minutes, hasn't moved. It's a big hind, I had to move around to get a different angle on it to see its head. But that just goes to show. So you see that orange rump sticking out. That's what you got to look for, just little things like that. Not whole deer. A little bit better.
glass in tip. If you're there to kill a deer and not just find deer, don't waste too much time looking where you can't kill a deer, where you can't recover the deer, where you can't even get there to be in range. Especially when it's what I call deer o'clock, like the hour before dark and the hour after daylight. Those times of day you need to be putting all your effort into looking exactly where you're hunting. Don't like here I could glass one, two Ks away. And I'd probably see deer if I looked there at the right time of day. But if I'm here to actually kill a deer, there's no point seeing one way over there because I ain't gonna get there. You gotta get pretty lucky when you're trying to bush stalk these stags. So all that sign back there was not real fresh. But then I, I cut up, contoured up a bit. I cut some fresh tracks and a real fresh hit on a tree that was today's this morning. But I couldn't follow him in to where he'd gone, so I went above him and try to sneak around. <sighs> Got a look at him, just his ass. Only about 30 metres away. Charged off. Anyway, here's his bed. It was still warm when I put my hand on it where he was sitting. Just in this probably 50 metre radius I found four beds all well used so he's obviously loving this little spot dappled shade here because it's a fairly warm day up there he charged off down through there never to be seen again Pretty cool little spot here. Makes you wonder, doesn't it? What's cruised around and lived in these hills all those years. So in these warmer conditions, when the flies have been given the fresh deer poo away, they've scared off now, but they were swarming on it. How do you tell if they're fresh? When they're dead fresh, they're still warm. When they're very fresh, they're still s slimy. These are probably a couple of days old. There's not a lot of sun on this side, so they don't dry out real quick. But if these flies are getting moisture off these, so 
you can give them the smell. And squeeze them a bit. This one's a little bit dry, so I'm guessing a few days old to a week. Probably less than a week old. If it's a strong smell, it's fresher, but it's not real strong. Well, I'm making my way back to camp. It's pretty bloody warm. The sleeves rolled up. In the breeze, a little bit of breeze is nice. But anyway, I've, I'm going to get more water back where I uh, got the fresh water this morning. Go back to camp, have lunch, have a bit of a rest, pack up. I'm going to hike back out to where I bumped that stag walking in. I'm going to have a crack at hunting in that area. I think I've exhausted this area a little bit. Done a bit of recon. Can't see a couple of the faces that I wanted to be able to see. And some of the faces that I'm seeing the deer on, is, they're a little bit too far. But I have just studied a bluff system here and I've worked out how I can get lower and cut about 300, 300 yards off the shot. Straight down there. Beautiful. There you go. A little bit older. Sort of see it starts to dry out a fair bit. No moisture left in it. So it's a couple of weeks old at least. So getting older. Now you're starting to talk a month or more. Changing colour, and then you got proper old, you know, white. That could be a year or more old. There's no moisture in that. But anyway, what you want to do is keep an eye, like a bit of a record in your head. If you go into a spot and you see a heap of sign but it's not necessarily fresh. Try to gauge how old it is and then try to remember or go back through some records on the you know, BOM, see whether it was wet, was it cold, was it windy, was it hot. See and try and gauge as to what weather, because deer are very sensitive to the weather, what time of year try and gauge what pushed the deer into that bit of country and then the next time you see that weather system coming through about the same time of year you can go last year there was some pretty good sign in that system so I'm going to go in there after this rain's gone because I reckon the rain pushed me um, I use that a fair bit I, I, I like to hunt cold fronts usually after them because I don't particularly like being there when it's and rain and wind but before a cold front and after a cold front come through a dynamite you can usually get on to a lot of deer those two times so the deer are sensitive to the barometric pressure I'm pretty sure and they can tell when a cold front's coming so they'll feed longer during the day because they know that the next day or two they might have to hunker down and they won't feed as much they won't get the sun and as soon as that weather breaks, boom, those sunny faces, those feed areas are what the deer are looking for because they've been held up, they've been cold, they get, they get a bit more hungry. More hungry. They get hungry. So, yeah, keep, keep uh, a bit of a record in your head or write it down, whatever. I don't write it down, but... Yeah. Another thing I do when I'm hunting a new area is every time I go in, I just take a screenshot of Google Earth of the area wherever I see deer put a little red dot and you keep going back in keep putting the little red dots in because sometimes you'll be surprised where you're seeing them 
and it's not where you want to see them, so then you've got to change your mindset and go, right, well, I want to see them on that face, but I'm not seeing them on the face, I'm actually seeing them on that face. And so then you get to start hunting that face, and once you start doing that, then you'll start seeing more deer and more likely to shoot one. Just because there's a real good looking face in your hunting country doesn't mean that that's what the deer want. A lot of, I've found so much good country that's hardly got a deer track on it. And well, I can't work out what it is. Maybe it's just the, I don't know. The, the, the ground is different there and it, it grows sour vegetation. Who would know? It could be something as simple as that. We're not tuned into that sort of stuff, but the deer are. So, yeah. Screenshot, put a red dot on every time you go in there and you see a deer in a particular spot, or you put one up, you know, you don't have to see it, just, or some really fresh sign, put a dot there. And after, you know, half a dozen trips, you'll probably find there'll be a cluster of dots in an area, and then you can target that area. That's, a, that's what I do a fair bit. Target specific areas. You have more chance of shooting the deer that live in that area than just trying to cast your net over all, all there is to see. Pinpoint an area. Sometimes you come up with nothing, and other times, bang, you're on. Here's a bit of a tour of camp. Pretty good one compared to the last couple. Still had to scratch out a bit of a spot. Got a new sleeping pad, Thermarest Uber Light. Dunno. It's alright. For one or two nights I reckon. It's real short, only does your shoulders and your hips. That's super duper light. Anyway, new little cooker. You busted camera. Sorry dad. I will buy a new one and we'll be able to get some decent bloody footage. Spewing. Didn't have that camera oh, this morning. Just called that dog and it is coming 100 miles an hour. Just packed up camp. That's all I'll leave behind is a sleeping pad for the next bloke. No more howling. Silly bugger. He went and sat in the opening over there and yodeled at me for a fair bit while I was eating the two minute noodles. And I thought, if you're still howling when I finish these noodles, you're in trouble, buddy. Anyway, one location called to him when I Went over there, he yodeled, I pinpointed him, 270 yards, uh, the three straight lap made a mess of him. Anyway, one less wild dog in, in this area, stirring up all the natives. Anyway, I'm going to hike back up this hill, a bit of cloud cover which is good, it's pretty warm. So I've got plenty of water, So, and I know I've got water up there too, I found a couple of little soaks. Got me life straw there if I have to have a big swig of you know, water that doesn't look real good. So I'm going to go up there and get back on the tops and I'm going to go and try and hunt that bigger stag that I bumped out of his bed on the walk in. Anyway, we'll see how, how we go up this hill because it's pretty steep coming in so it's going to be a bit of murder going out. But I'm pretty light, I've got me walking sticks out so it should be right. Oh, it's too warm for this. Oh. Anyway, if you've watched this far, hopefully you've hit that subscribe button. Leave me a comment. Love reading your comments. 
if you've watched more than one of my videos or if you've just watched this one and then you're going to go to my channel and watch some of my other videos hit the subscribe button if i see the subscribers going up i make more videos simple as that I don't know, I wouldn't even be a quarter of the way up this hill yet. I've been, been going up this spur for an hour now. Still got a bit to go. Once I get to the top of this spur, I'm on the main ridge. I got K and a half back to where I saw that stag. So I'll set up there somewhere for a hunt. Whether I stay the night or not, it depends on what I find up there. Sort of once you get up on that main ridge back to where I saw that stag. It's like high playing type country, you know, open, bluffy, fairly flat going sort of stuff. I got a bit to go yet. A little bit of stag sign here, but I think it's just deer moving up and down this spur as they sort of come out of this big system back up into the high plains. Anyway, I'm sweating. Well, seems as though it's been warm. I've been looking for snakes. Now it's five o'clock, sun's down, it's cloudy. I'm at an elevation of, I don't know, above a thousand. And I just walked into my first tiger snake. I've got the heart going. Anyway, he's all curled up trying to keep the warmth. He stabbed me a couple of times. Shot in his little hole. Anyway, I'm up on the high plains now, so I've got and a bit to get back to where I saw that good stag walking in so I'm just going to hunt all this it's perfect time a couple of hours before dark who knows just don't know in this big country deer can just come out of nowhere thank you tiger snake since I've seen him I've had my head on the ground looking for more snakes what do you do, what do you find in deer country when you've always got your head on the ground? There might be a few people watching haven't seen a lot of deer or haven't shot a deer yet or haven't shot many and they're wondering why they're not shooting them or not seeing them. I've got a tip for you. Get yourself into good deer country as often as you can. Try to do everything right you've got to put in about 90% of the, of the equation and the deer's got to put in the other 10% so I've walked back out to where I bumped that stag on the way in now the chances of him coming out on this clearing in pretty bloody low but there's nothing to say another one 
bigger one, smaller one, whatever. Just a beer. I'd be happy to see a beer. Isn't going to come out. Because this is, in this area, this seems to be a bit of a thoroughfare. So I've put myself in this spot at the right time of the day. And I'm just going to give it a chance. If you do that regularly enough, good things will happen. So don't get discouraged because you're not seeing beer or not shooting big stags or whatever. The majority of these blokes that you see on Instagram and Facebook and that that shoot big stags regular are up the bush all the time. It's the hours that get the deer on the ground. That's why novice people in can shoot thumping big stags because at the end of the day, if you're in the bush and that deer does 10% for you, you've got him. Put in the effort, 90%, let the deer do the rest. So I'm sitting here till last, or not last line, until it's right on, real sneaky time. And I'm going to sneak along through here. I've got about 600 metres of this open stuff in front of me, back to where I bumped in. And then I'm going to walk back to the ute. I don't see any sense in staying up here. There's not a lot of deer in this subalpine sort of stuff this time of the year yet. Later in the year, yep. But I'm not seeing the sign on the ground, so just going to hit this one little spot right on dark and just hope that they do the 10% stuff up. He's already stuffed up once this weekend now and I didn't take advantage of it. So anyway, let's see what happens in the last hour of light here. Right, I'm just heading out. I'm nearly back to the ute already. So I snuck through those meadows just before, you know, right when they should be out. I um, glassed two deer three k's away that were out feeding in the open. So I figured, right, out, if they're quiet, they're going to be out, but yeah, nothing. So anyway, hope you enjoyed that one. I enjoyed making it. It was a good little spot. Keep that one in the memory bank. And uh, don't forget to hit subscribe. Cheers. See you on the next one. Oh, they're dumb in the lights, aren't they? There's another one a bit closer, but I think it's already done the runner. Perfect little leader.